two weeks ago, two weeks ago, and even though you may not believe it, uh, remember two weeks ago I talked about how old I was? I am older now than I was then. Yeah, believe that. As a matter of fact, I am now, right now, the oldest that I have ever been. Same. You too? Yeah. Dude, hi. Air high five. There we go. Yes. But I will guarantee you, I will guarantee you that I was not this old when I was younger. I know. It is hard to believe, but you, you have to trust me on that one. As a matter of fact, here's another one that could be hard for you to grasp. I was born at a very young age. Me too! I know. But I have been getting older ever since. Dude, I know. It is hard to believe. One, one of the things... One of the things that is, is part, if you ever knew me, or, or know me, one of the things that's part of my life is that I have this sort of um, insatiable quest to learn stuff. I want to know stuff. I've spent my whole life just sort of trying to know as much as I can. You guys don't know me very well, but for instance, one of the things, I took a, a course in middle school that was on woodworking, and I love woodworking, and ever since then, I've been trying to learn as much about woodworking as I can, and I like to do that for fun. And I'm working at it. And, but there's lots of things that I want to know. I just want to sort of know everything. I want to know as much as I possibly can. I remember sitting at a McDonald's once with my wife a long time ago when I was younger. And I said, you know, I want to know about the world. There's so much about the world I don't know. And we looked and there were some little birds flying around us. And I said to her, I don't even know what kind of birds those are. And so we got, we picked up a bird book and started trying to learn about the different birds that we see because I didn't even know anything about the birds that were around me. And then I said to her, you know, I don't even know anything about, a couple years later, I said, I don't know anything about like the, the flowers that we see when we're out in the woods or something. I don't know anything. And so we picked up a book so I could learn about the flowers. And then, you know, I said, you know, there's lots of things that we don't know. And I wanted to know more. I just want to know more. I want to know as much as I can. And so we eventually started picking up books about trees. So we would know what kind of trees we were seeing. And so that we would understand. And now lately, uh, oh, and then I got, I got me, myself a very nice telescope. Because I wanted to be able to look at the stars. I wanted to know what I was seeing up there. I wanted to understand as much about our world as I possibly could. And then I got, I was interested to find out about more about plants and what plants that are around us that are edible. Do you know there are a lot of edible plants that are just outside? And so I started trying to learn about what plants are edible and which ones are poisonous and to learn as much as I can. And so I'm trying to learn about animals and plants and flowers and birds and stars and trees and as much as I can about other subjects. I really love science. I want to know, learn as much about science as I can. I want to learn as much about um, things like people that think. It's called philosophy. I like to discuss philosophy with people. I just have this insatiable quest to know things and to learn as much as I possibly can. Now, in the process, one of the things that I also want to know is I want to know God. I want to learn as much about God as I possibly can. I want to know how to grow spiritually so that I have a deeper understanding of God all the time. It's just one of these quests that I have that I want to know as much as I possibly can. Now, Peter talks to us about this in a book that he wrote that's in the Bible. It's called 1 Peter. 
And I wanted to read a, a small chunk for you. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, Peter is talking to us about how we can get to know God and how we can grow in spiritual things. And here's what he says. Get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness as you are coming to Christ. So I see there a couple things that I want to talk to you about tonight that are part of how we grow spiritually. And I'll put it this way. The first is ridding. The second is craving. And the third is coming. So I'm going to talk to you about those briefly. The first thing he says is ridding. He said, You've, if you want to grow spiritually, if you want to know God and know more about God all the time, there are things you've got to get rid of. And he's not talking about your Barbie dolls because you're past that age now. He's not talking about your Legos because you don't play with them anymore. What he's talking about is, oh, you still do play with them? I love them. Yeah. yeah, you're on. You're, you're, you're like connecting with me tonight. What, what he's talking about is ridding ourselves of behavior that aren't conducive to spiritual growth. I know I just used the word conducive. That means the things that don't lead us to spiritual growth. Now, set growth. Did I just say growth? Well, I'm growth. Right, okay. I am growth? Never mind. Um, <laughs> What he's talking about, spiritual growth, he said there are things that we need to get rid of ourselves, that we need to get rid of in ourselves. And some of the examples he gives are deceit and jealousy and hypocrisy and all kinds of speaking poorly about things. So let's talk about those a little bit. What he's talking about is inner characteristics. If you want to grow spiritually, there are things you've got to stop doing. You just got to cut it out. The first thing he mentions is, uh, like, he, he uses the word malice, which is all kinds of bad behavior. The way this translated it was, you got to get rid of the evil things. But let's put it this way, you got to get rid of your bad behavior. That means if there are things you're doing that you should not be doing, if you want to be growing spiritually, you need to get rid of those. You need to stop doing those things. Now, there are some things that, that what he's talking about is that you have to do this yourself. God is going to help you, but you need to do it. For instance, if you catch yourself lying every once in a while to get yourself out of a tight spot, stop it. you got to stop that. Nobody's going to stop that for you, except maybe your mama when she catches you. But you have to stop. If you're lying, you have to stop that. If you, you know, like cheat every once in a while in school, you have to stop that. If you are thinking badly about people, or if you're telling jokes, the kind of jokes that you shouldn't be telling, or if you're, if you're participating in some behavior that you shouldn't be doing, stop it. God is not going to do that for you. God will help you do it. God will give you strength. God will participate with you. But these are things that you have to do. You have to rid yourself. And that's the first thing I was talking about. If you want to grow spiritually, you have to do this ridding thing. You've got to stop. If you like fight, fight with people, verbally fight with people, or if you put them down, or if you make fun of other people, that's what you have to stop. Because that's how, if you want to know God, and you want to grow spiritually, you have to participate in this ridding kind of behavior. And you've got to put that stuff aside, and that's something you have, it's part of your commitment, it's part of habits that you build, it's part of controlling yourself. All of those are involved in ridding yourself of this kind of behavior that's going to put a barrier between you and God and make it very hard for you to grow spiritually. The next thing that Peter talks about, I said, is craving. He says you have to crave pure spiritual milk. Now I'll tell you this, I, our son, 
just had a brand new baby. Our son and his wife, they live in Nashville, Tennessee, and they just had a brand new baby. She looks exactly like me, so she's cute as can be, right? She's really a gorgeous baby. Um, she's only, right now, she's four weeks old. She's only one month old. So she's this tiny little pumpkin. Just, you can hold her hand and, and you can hold her little tushy here. And she's just cute as can be. But I'll tell you this, she drinks like a horse, right? She, if you give her a bottle, and then you have to give her another one. Yeah, I don't know where she puts it all. But she is thirsty as a horse, and she'll drink as much as you give her. She will drink day and night. She wakes up in the middle of the night to drink a couple bottles. She wakes up all during the day, drink, 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 right? That's the kind of analogy that Peter uses. He said, if you want to grow spiritually, that's how you have to approach God. You have to approach God like a thirsty baby who craves pure spiritual milk. If you wanna grow in spiritual things, there are some things that it would help you to do. First of all, read your Bible and learn your Bible because in your Bible there is great wisdom there for you to bring into your life. Uh, the Bible talks about that you have to pray. And yes, sometimes prayer is just saying to God what you wanna say to God. But I'll tell you this, Prayer is also something we have to learn how to do. Remember, the disciples approached Jesus and said, will you teach us how to pray? They already knew how to pray. What they wanted is to learn how to pray more effectively. They wanted to learn how to pray so that it made more of a difference, and so they craved that. They, uh, another thing we have to crave is doing good. Like I talked about, we're going to rid ourselves of the, of the bad stuff. We also have to crave the good stuff, which means loving other people the way you want to be loved. It's treating other people the way that you want to be treated. It's choosing the good things to do instead of questionable things to do. It's sometimes making the sacrifices to do that because being good is not always the most convenient thing. And being good is not always the most fun thing or the easiest thing. But if you want to be good, it's something you have to crave. Just like I craved to know how to do woodworking and I craved to know how to identify birds and how to identify animals and plants and to know what plants are edible and which are poisonous and trees and butterflies and snakes, right? That means you have to, like I did, I had to read the book. I had to learn the book. I had to work at it. It's the same with if you want to know God and you want to grow spiritually, you got to read the book. You've got to want to do it. You have to build this into your schedule. It's not something that will happen automatically. You can't just sit at your home and, and go, well, if God wants me to know something, he better teach it to me because I'm going to go play video games. And that's not how it works. you got to do it. And so the ridding is something you have to do. The craving is also something that you have to do. Like when I wanted to learn these things about the stars, I had to do that, right? That just doesn't by osmosis seep into my brain. It's something I had to learn. I had to make myself do it. I wanted that badly enough that I did something about it. If you want to know God and you want to grow spiritually, then you have to want that badly enough to do something about it, right? Some of you are learning to be musicians. You are taking piano lessons or guitar or saxophone, clarinet, flute, trumpet, trombone, whatever it happens to be. You know what, if you want that badly enough, you got to take the lessons, you got to practice, right? You have to commit yourself to that. It's the same as being on a sports team. It's the same as being in a, a, a learning how to dance. It's the same as being in a musical at school, right? If you want to do that, then you got to do it. It doesn't just happen, you got to do it. 
And it's the same with growing spiritually. Now, the third thing that Peter talks about is that he says, coming to Christ. Coming to Christ is a very important part of this picture because it's not just a matter of being good. It's not just a matter of being a good person. It's not just a matter of, okay, I don't tell lies and I'm a nice person. That, that makes me a Christian, right? No, that makes you a good person who doesn't tell lies. What Peter's talking about is having Christ in you and living, like I talked about last time I was here two weeks ago, I said, talked about holiness, where you are set apart for God. And that's what you have chosen, and that's what you continue to choose every day. Getting to know God and growing spiritually is not a decision you make once, and then you never have to do that again. It's a decision you make every day. Like other analogies I made, if you want to learn to be a musician, you don't say, okay, I decided that I want to learn how to play the piano, and I took a lesson. That doesn't make you a musician, right? You have to practice every day. You have to keep taking lessons. You have to keep working at it. That's how you learn how to play the piano. It's a, a commitment of many years and sometimes even a lifetime. That's what knowing God is like. It's something you commit yourself to every day. And that's how you learn how, what God is like and what he wants you to do and how to be in Christ. So let me pull this together for you because I see that our time is short. If you want to grow in your relationship with God, it's a partnership. You have to do it, but you don't have to do it all by yourself. God will be in you, and God will help you, and God will teach you, and God will strengthen you, but it's something that you have to do. God will do his part, you have to do your part. Rid yourself of the stuff that you should not be doing. Crave the stuff that you should be doing. And do it all in the context of coming to Jesus Christ. There's nothing automatic about it. Like I did with all these nature things that I talked to you about. You get the book. You take the lessons. You work at it. Whether it's athletics whether it's woodworking, whether it's musicianship, whether it's the musical, whether it's whatever your cravings happen to be. It's the same when you crave a relationship with God. Read the book, learn the book, take the lessons, work at it. And that's how it works, to grow in God and to grow spiritually. Becca.